Where are they now? Springbok Rugby Legends 1995. Well, the man that led from the front. I, I, I feel like I should be addressing you with a sir or even perhaps a um in front of the name Francois Pina. Not um, Darren. This man is agree. too <laughs> handsome to be a um. We are going to lunch today, you and I. Yeah. Thank you for that. I'm an um, yeah. I'm an, I'm an old man now. You know, 1995 is so long ago. But so fortunate, so blessed that people still remember, you know, where they were, how they felt. And uh, yeah, it's just been a, an, an incredible journey and, and, a, and a game that changed our lives. Um, you know, we didn't we didn't know how mm. big it's going to be. We had a sense, mm. but no idea. You know, when the bus left the stadium and when the bus couldn't move, people were dancing in the streets. I mean, I'm getting... As Bakis Buta says, I'm getting chicken pox as I, <laughs> as I tell the story. And, and just for me, being so blessed to be the captain of that team, incredible team, and to share a podium with one of the greatest leaders the world has ever seen, it's just, um, I'm really, really blessed. Now, it's uh, this is all on Facebook Live. You need to see how how young this man still looks. Not a grey hair on his head. Is that what My happens when you win so World Cups? So just forever young. Built like a like a like a I can't say like built a like, like a brick toilet, <laughs> <laughs> as I would say. But how much does it take to maintain all of that? You are clearly in the gym every day. Good genes. Uh, I've lost my knees. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, we're going to talk about we're going to talk about the Sunlam Cape Town Marathon, um, uh -huh. which I'm involved in. But running is no longer for me. So I like power walking and walking up the mountain, and at mm -hmm. least four times a week to just go and do some power walking walking up there's so much in cape town that mm. is just so beautiful and you can do so to keep fit there's no excuse um mm. you, if you can't run you can walk you can do some stuff there's now gyms in the park um so i do a little bit of this a little bit of that try and keep your diet um mm. it's just a bit of discipline yeah but thank you very much for the compliment now now for the for the kids in the car um listening Sia Colisi, he's the man. He's the one you know with the most recent uh, World mm -hmm. Cup rugby success. Mm -hmm. But before that, there was John Smith. And before that, there was this man. And I want to just take you back to that moment before we move forward. Sramsky, back in the pocket. Has the chance to drop the goal. Back it comes to Sramsky. Up goes the kick. Up goes the roll. Sramsky has kept his head. Two minutes gone in the second period of extra time. South Africa's dream is alive once more. They're in the lead now. That is it. The final whistle in South Africa win this Rugby World Cup final by 15 points to 12. And what a dramatic finish for the host country. It has always been said that the host country has a huge advantage. Well, South Africa have used that to their best of their ability. And uh, an absolutely dramatic finish. Just look at those men out there in the middle. And then that happened and it all seemed like a bit of a dream. Mm. And then a man got up on a stage with another man. And there were some iconic words spoken there that literally went around the world. And just remember, this was South Africa 1995. Transfer. And then we had 65,000 South Africans here today. Tremendous support. David, we didn't have 60,000 South Africans. We had 43 million South Africans. Those are probably your greatest words that you've ever said other than I love you to your wife. <laughs> did, did you plan that line? <laughs> I've been asked so many times, uh, did we plan that line? I said, if I'm, I was that smart, I would be in advertising. <laughs> <laughs> it just came naturally. And the reason why it came so naturally was what happened in our country in the six weeks. You know, leading up to the start, the first game, we, we checked into uh, the hotel yeah, to play against uh, Australia at mm -hmm. Newlands. And the lady that checked us in was at Koza, and she was wearing a springbok, um, which would never have happened before. Mm -hmm. And the, the gentleman that served us breakfast, you know, he would ask us uh, if we had enough to eat, and he would probably be a, a Sutu mm -hmm. or, or a Zulu. So everybody was talking about the springboks. And as the tournament progressed, um, it was just amazing to see the scenes. Now, we were isolated most parts because you're on the rugby field training for the game, and then you're in the hotel. But you get... You get snippets from your family, what's happening, and, and, and word. 
and then this thing happened where Mr. Mandela was so gracious, he came and, and wore our, our jersey, and the stadium exploded. The emotion in the stadium, the emotion in the people. So I just couldn't say it was the fortunate ones that bought tickets for the game. It had mm -hmm. to be for each and every one in South Africa. Yeah, so it's... Mm. Um, I'm glad I had that epiphany. <laughs> <laughs> Light bulb came on. <laughs> oh man, what a time! But you've done so much since then. Mm. Um, you're not, you know. I remember so many years ago having a conversation with you, um, and you said, you know, we 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 don't do. Uh, you want to get involved at grassroots level, yeah. because after the World Cup. Um, you only played for a year after that, didn't you? After 95. Yeah, then I got sacked and uh, I was <laughs> <laughs> I got kicked out. <laughs> what is a Springbok story without a bit of drama, uh, Francois? Well, it's actually, it was fortuitous because um, I, I wanted to get into business. Remember in 95, we were amateurs. Mm. And we had jobs and, and we were away from our jobs and I had a little business in Midrand. So I was away from my business and I was going to go back and, and build it. And what was your business? I was in, I, I, most, I was trading stuff, you know, importing barbecues from America, um, heaters from Italy. And, okay. And so that was a trading business. Although I studied law, I did my, my, my BPROC LLB, I went into trading and property. And uh, I was going to go back into that. So the game didn't turn professional after 95 for the first time. And uh, my coach and mentor and my wife, they convinced me to, to go overseas. I had three offers from, uh, from clubs overseas, Leicester, Richmond and Saracens. And uh, I decided with their advice to go for a year. To go for, you know, to go for a year and, and I've never traveled. The first time I flew abroad in my life, I was Springbok captain. Mm. Mm. So sure. this is, I was very myopic in my upbringing. Um, so we decided to do that. After three weeks, I wanted to leave. I and mean, the club was so, so amateur. I mean, <laughs> I, I went to the training field. I asked him, where the Saracens train? They say, yeah, it was a public park where people were walking their dogs. <laughs> and we had, to, we had to go and clean the dog poo. No. I kid you uh, not, before we trained. So you could train. Mm. Yeah, so that's where the club was. And um, I was then going to leave and... and they asked me to take over. I became the first ever player coach in, in the game. And fortunately, mm. that next year, we won the first cup in 127 years. So that's a mm. Came back after being the CEO and stayed there for a while. Both kids were born there. And uh, I was approached by the first ranked group, F&B, um, uh, 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 Paul Harris and, and Derek Carson's a great, great mm. friend that, that sadly passed. Mm. And they said to me, do you want to join us? I said, listen, I'm not a banker. <laughs> I know <laughs> nothing about But they say, you know something about marketing and sports and so forth. Mm. And they made me... They gave me an opportunity in, in the bank, and uh, that's uh, I was there for over over six years. I grew in, in the business, but initially we looked at how do we position the bank um, in the markets where people open up bank accounts, and it's really a motive thing. You know, you mm. you you never those days. It's different now. Would not change a bank. You know, you might be multiple bank, but you won't change. And so we looked at the classic clashes. Mm. You know, the games. Um, and this is one thing people don't know about you. Yeah. Yeah. Is that we uh, w when we were talking and you had this idea and you were like you know what grassroots level mm. um schoolboy right and I, I remember you in particular saying we've got to do like the varsity mm. and we've got to make it cool we've got to make it fun mm. we want to bring back it's got to be like a friday night lights vibe mm. and it's got to turn whichever town mm. it's being hosted in on its head and I'm like, oh, okay, that's a cool it's idea. Nice idea. Yeah. And, then, <laughs> and, then, and then the next thing is, he's had too many knocks against the head. <laughs> <laughs> and then Varsity Cup Rugby, which yeah. is huge. That was all you're doing. Yeah, I was, listen, I won't bore you behind. It was, we sat down and said, how do we how do we become number one in the world in all levels of sport? And so grassroots, obvious place to start. And these classic clashes, I mean, it's incredible. Uh, the biggest one is in Paul, yeah. 24,000 people. But it doesn't matter where it is in the country. That's where you have so much emotion. You'll have the CEOs of businesses, the chairmen of companies, you know, the lady that owns the dealership. Mm. Everybody comes to that game. So that's where the brand was then positioned. The and, fathers. Uh, exactly. <laughs> on the sideline. Well, no, the moms. <laughs> the moms. The moms. The moms. <laughs> the moms are amazing. <laughs> I've I've heard the best coaching from moms. <laughs> it's, it's the passion. And then the next the next step is to to go to university. Now, Varsity Cup is a little bit of my story. You know, my folks didn't have money to put me into university, um, and I played SA schools rugby and I field cricket. So um, I got a scholarship uh, mm -hmm. to go to study uh, law, and so. The, the the players that participate in Varsity Cup and Varsity Shield, there's 17 teams now. Mm. You, you should have seen the final in Alice. I mean, it was insane. It went to the last minute of the game, the passion there, and then the final at Stellenbosch. So 
Um, th- I'm really proud of what we've managed to build there, but the talent that's coming through, yeah. they have to study mm. and they have to pass, otherwise they can't play. Mm-hmm. And so that for me is the, also the, the beauty of, mm. of this competition is to, yeah, w- when I realized, you know, once you've done with sport, you need something else. Yeah. You know, if you finished, um, there's got to be something else you'll do. If you don't have develop, if you're not, a, if you don't have a skill set, then it's it's difficult. It's tough, yeah. And and you are a, a prime example of that. I mean, we've seen some rugby players sadly that didn't have a backup plan, mm. fell on hard times. But you have just gone forward. You, you literally own everything now. <laughs> like you, what's n- left to n- get? No, no, I mean, no. He goes and he buys. <laughs> I almost chucked my water. <laughs> <laughs> he, he goes and buys now Saracens <laughs> Rugby Club for five hundred million pounds. <laughs> No, there's a, there's a consortium. I'm a very small peanut in that packet. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm st- proudly still involved with uh, with, with Saracens. Um, mm. Yeah, and we've built some nice stuff uh, along the way. And one of the things that we, we're going to talk about this morning is the Sunlam Cape Town Marathon. Yeah, because he, yeah. he owns that now too. I'm again a small, <laughs> peanut, <laughs> a small peanut in this packet. But now I need to ask you what all you own because so it's, it's all that stuff, right? But now, yesterday, I see on your uh, WhatsApp uh, message, you own an Indian restaurant as well, because your WhatsApp <laughs> status is Indian Pinar lunch with family on oh, Mother's no, Day. Oh, no, that was a mistake. Starters, main is Lou's chicken. Lua. <laughs> Lua's chicken. Lua's chicken. Then it's uh, Frankie's something. You see, you can't spell that because that's an Indian. Yeah, I see that's that. That's meat vindaloo. And my brother Dionski, he's making a palak paneer, but that's also spelled in Indian. Yes. This is Mother's Day, which is on the weekend. Now, so every Mother's Day, since I can remember the kids being this small, um, we cook for the mums. And I come up with a menu. And the menu ah. is, oh, uh, we're going IPL, so that's why it's the Indian. Uh-huh. Ah, okay. lunchy, so we're following <laughs> the IPL. Theme. You own the IPL as well? <laughs> 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 he probably does. <laughs> you have a steak in the Chennai Super Kings? Just a small peanut. <laughs> he probably went and coached uh, the Chennai awesome. Super Kings first. So no one. They were also the, playing in a field. Well, the IPL <laughs> when the IPL came here in two thousand and nine, you'll remember. Um, mm. It was in three weeks we had to put it together, and I met Lalit Modi socially in London with a good friend of mine, Etienne de Villiers. That was so. You did then. We did the marketing campaign for the IPL in 2009. <laughs> yeah. yeah, remember the heat is on. Yes. Glenn Fry song, yes. the heat is on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's about um, uh, yeah. It's a, <laughs> a reflection of modern India. So we took yeah. heat, vibrant colors, Bollywood, and we the uh, the bugler that's uh, you hear at the at the cricket. You know that bugler they play and the people clap. Mm-hmm. That was my idea. It actually comes from rugby. Mm. In Paris, they do it. So I said, why can you get that bugler and start playing? And all of a sudden, it took off. Now in India, you don't have a match where we're at the bugler we, playing mm. for, a, for sure. a while. So, yeah. Look, you know what? You, you know you've made it in life. Not when you've won a World Cup and you've done all these other amazing things. When Matt Damon plays <laughs> you in a movie. Imagine. <laughs> Matt, Matt Damon, Damon had to audition <laughs> to play you. Yeah. Matt Damon Lucky probably me. had to bulk up. Lucky me. To be you. <laughs> he tried. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he tried a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and isn't he just one of the nicest guys? A uh, super nice guy and super mm. smart. You yeah. Know, hyper intelligent. I mean, he's so. Um, uh, one night under the wine, uh, we're sitting getting to know one another. And I told him I'm climbing Kilimanjaro with some friends for the Make a Difference Leadership Foundation. Then we're coming back and doing the, the cycle race. He phoned his brother, who's a triathlete that night. He says, you're going you're gonna to come over. I'm going, we're going to race Francois and his, and his best friend on a tandem around mm. Cape Town. I thought he's never going to oh. do it. Mm-hmm. His brother came out. <laughs> I mean, one of my poor bearers did it with me. And he cycled around. It was a windy day. But true to him, he stopped, signed autographs. It mm. was, there was no airs and graces. Um, just a really super nice man. I got uh, one of the, the two interviews that they offered around Invictus, the mm. movie about uh, you guys and the World Cup. And I totally stitched him up on another level in this interview. He didn't know what was going on. Um, I'm actually going to play today as a throwback you Thursday. You Mac Damon. Very on yes. brand for you, Darren. <laughs> <laughs> You couldn't even leave that man alone. I got I got the opportunity for the movie, uh-huh. and I totally destroyed him. He <laughs> <laughs> was so awesome, though. All right, listen, Francois, we've got to get to news. I don't want to rush this conversation. Yeah. So do you have to be anywhere? Because I'd love to unpack the um, Sunlam Cape Town Marathon and 
everything that's awesome about it in about five I've minutes. I've been given so many compliments, I'm staying right here for yeah. the rest of the day. <laughs> <laughs> Where are they now? What are they doing? That's what we're doing. And we are talking to the legend of a man this morning, Mr. Francois Pinot. Hey. Yeah. Give him his, his Aaron, applause. can we just please drop the legend part? No, nah, but you are. No. You know, <laughs> I'm one in my own lunchtime. <laughs> <laughs> you, are, you are the humblest legend I've ever met, actually. And I think the most impressive things you've done happened after you won that World Cup. Thank you. You know, that's, that's your legacy. You know, before we, we, we move on to the important stuff, I, I walked out into my producer booth and there's a lot of people out there. Um, there's film crew, there's, there's all sorts here mm -hmm. this morning. But everybody is asking the same question about you. And they are saying, and I know Sherlyn and Sibs, we haven't spoken about this before, but uh -huh. you've thought this. What have we thought? What have we thought? What is that cologne that you're wearing? <laughs> It smells because expensive. they say it smells like money. Oh my! <laughs> so um, it's not something you get at Edgar's. It's that good, good. <laughs> this it's is some real good, good. It's a, it's a Ventus by Creed. Oh, it's a it's a what? A Ventus by Creed. See, I've never even a Creed to me is a, is a rock band. <laughs> event is where where do you get why this? do you ask the stuff because it's interesting what is the get like, in the shop you're not at edgar's <laughs> <laughs> you should uh, sorry i've just been told by my producer six thousand nine hundred and thirty three rand a bottle is that right no or do you get this at duty free when you go to saracen they sponsor huh? they sponsor you yes Sure. Wow. A premium brand for I'm a premium I'm lying, man. man. I got this as a gift. <laughs> I'm lying. I got it as a present from my wife. Okay. Oh, she's yeah. doing well too. Yeah. Wifey That's wants like... other people to smell you. <laughs> because I've got Invictus. No, no. I've got X. Lies. From Checkers. Uh -uh, Lies. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Both of you are blessed with women who love and spoil you clearly. Yeah. Simpson. Well, I've got Invictus by Paco Rabanne. <laughs> Which would have made more sense for you. Yeah. You could actually come up. We with move off this. You, know, you could come up with your we own got important fragrance. things to talk about. Invictus by Francois. Oh yeah, Frankie. <laughs> Frankie. By, by Frankie. Frankie. He's thought Everybody about it. Everybody calls me Frankie. Yeah. Frankie. Um. All right. Well, Frankie. Um, the reason why you are here, the Sunlam Cape Town Marathon. Sure, this is something that will thrust the city onto the global map and we love seeing in all these reports that come top five best city in the world for this tourist this that 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 we're always top five if not number one i think this is going to have a lot to do with just taking us even beyond yeah there's no other major event in south africa there's no major tennis event or major golf event and this is the first time we can bring a major a global event to the the city of cape town and it started off really by Ilana Mayo, who's a fantastic human being, you know, mm. an incredible human being, doing a lot for, uh, doing, putting a lot back into running, coming to ask some advice um, uh, on, on how, how, how does she build a charitable organization. I started the Make a Difference Leadership Foundation, like I said, almost 20 years ago, so we've got a lot of experience. And the conversation then started flowing towards Cape Town and a marathon, and I asked her, why don't we have a marathon like London, like New York, mm. like Boston, like mm. Berlin, Chicago, and we've got the most incredible city and let's go and try and do it so meeting up with the western province athletics first they're the custodians of of the marathon and then meeting with the city you have to bring a lot of role plays together that share in your dream and vision mm. and we said we want to build a world major marathon and that's how the journey started um in the beginning uh we had to get a sponsor on board and sign up put their hand up so they became our first sponsor and things started to fall into place but a lot of hard work and heavy lifting has been done you know we were the first to get um, silver status. Now we're the only marathon on the African continent that's got gold status in 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 marathon running. Um, hmm. There's it's so impressive, Franza, because also the marathon's only what eight years old, yeah. but it feels like it's been a part of the fabric of Cape Town for so much longer. Yeah, you know, and it's just resonated with with everybody. And that's a thank you to all the role players that I've mentioned. Yeah, to Western Province Athletics, to the city of Cape Town, to the people, to the running clubs. You know, they go and man, they they put out stalls. Um, we want to emulate bits and pieces of other marathons. New York has got bands, and the community gets involved. We want to do that. London raises an enormous amount for charity. Mm. I think in 2019 they raised something like ninety thousand 
90 million dollars. But now the, those, the London wow. and New York Marathon, you can only run it if you are running for charity. For a charity, yes. Yeah. So we've got those elements um, in, involved as well. And if you look at the, uh, the financial impact that the marathon has on the city, Chicago, it's like 5.5 billion rand economic impact. Because mm. you get overseas runners to come and run. Yeah. They stay in hotels. There's VAT that's added. You know, they, they ride cars. And they you're part of that world major circuit of, of marathons. And that's the key. And that's what we're putting our hand up now to do. We uh, are, are a candidate, candidate to become an Ab- Abbott's World Marathon Majors. And there's a three-year vetting process that takes place. So they'll send their team out this year to come and vet uh, certain elements of, of the marathon. For instance, we need to have a wheelchair race. So we yeah. needed to change our route for that. We can't have the bridge of a Batenkrach anymore. So full road closure. So we need the city of Cape Town to support us in that. So th- those are all the elements that we now need to get ready mm. for, for this year and the next two years. So they're coming out with a, with a, with a book to go tick, they, they tick, tick. They come with tick, a team. Yeah. Yeah. They come mm. with a team. They're very supportive because there's no major marathon on the African continent. Mm. But yet, 85% of the marathon Winners, yes. by Africa. Yes. yes, I mean yeah, we yeah, yeah. kick ass all across yeah. the globe, but we need our own major marathon, and, mm. and that's 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 the passion, and and you know also for the people of South Africa to yeah. be able to say, listen, I've run a, I've run a major. Well, you know, this is just with the fact that um, the the bigger objective here, and and this is to make Cape Town this this absolute powerhouse. We've got the sevens rugby here. <coughs> We're going to have the, um, the, netball the, World Cup. the Netball World Cup. We've got the E, uh, Formula E coming here. And now to have a major marathon, the Cape Town Marathon, that gets thrust on everybody's TV screens all around the world. And that, that's it. You know, once a major, always a major. Mm. When we achieve the major status, it's now forever. Um, the, the macro picture is there's about 2.2 million runners that want to run a major in the world. And there's less than 300,000 slots. Mm. So there's a big overflow. As an example, London, there's, there are 300,000 300, people that can't run it because mm. it's sold out. Mm. So if those people can jump on a plane and come here because there's major status in Cape Town, and that's the key. So our projection is in 2025 to have 10,000 international runners and 15,000 by 2030, that, that's that's our mm. aim. And when that happens, you know, there's a lot of impact that, that the city of Cape Town has, but your point is so important. The world sees you. Yeah. I mean, there are over 10 million marathon runners in the world and they all watch the majors. And their families mm. watch the majors. And then mm. you just, you know, you'll market South Africa, you'll market Cape Town. Yeah. From here, they'll go probably go to the, uh, the go on a safari and, and do yeah, some other yeah. stuff. Yeah. And is, is the route, um, is, is it finalized as yet? Are, are, are you looking at the, what are the things, like, you know, we're going to highlight specific parts of Cape Town? You must ask our technical director. She tells me it's as close as damn it. You know, we need to mm. t- tweak one or two more things, <laughs> yeah. uh, and then we'll announce the route. But it's it's almost there to uh, comply with uh, becoming a world major marathon. Sure, I love what I'm hearing, mm. and uh, I'm pleased to announce too that uh, KFM is your official Yay. radio partner. Woo! Yes. Excellence only, <laughs> <laughs> and that's so important because if people don't know about the passion, about the hard work and so forth, they, mm. they can't support. And the call to action and the ask to the people listening this morning is, running a marathon is not impossible. Big fat boy, yeah, did it. I ran the London <laughs> marathon. Um, <laughs> it's, a, it's almost a something that you have to do. Mm-hmm. And it, it seems daunting, but it's not. It helps you to get fit, that's the one thing. And you start off by walking and then jogging and build yourself a, mm-hmm. a goal. And then if you run it for somebody else, which is what I did, you can't quit <laughs> mm. <laughs> because yeah. you know you're getting you're raising funds from somebody else. So mm. I'm asking the listeners that are listening in this morning consider putting on your running shoes and get ready. There's a 10 kilometer piece run on mm. on on the Saturday. There's also a 21 kilometer time trial, and there's a 46 kilometer time uh, 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 trail run uh, by Ryan Sands. That's very mm. exciting. Uh, but the the big thing is the Sunday. There, there's the also 16th. I see that there's also. Um, a five k piece run on the Saturday as yeah. well. Yeah, that's more of a walk. You know, a lot of people yeah, take that's that more of my vibe too. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. Do, do you have a hundred meter sprint? Because that I can do. Oh man, look. So, look, th- we're going to be telling you a lot more about it, and and this rolls out. But uh, Sunday, the sixteenth of October, that is when it is, is going to be going down. So you do have time. Um, I'm inspired. To prepare. Maybe not for that full marathon, but at least that twenty one. We there's, no, no, there's no 21. Okay. We don't have. 
normally what you don't do is you don't have a 21. When you have a full marathon and world major marathons, they focus on the marathon. Mm-hmm. The, the 21 is the, uh, the trail the run. Trail the trail run, run yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. The mountain, yeah, it's in the mountains. That is a long So I might do the 22. <laughs> I've already got my shoes. Relax. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> Francois, good luck with it. We're going to give you the full might of this radio station to support mm-hmm. it. So, um, Entry numbers, you say again, you've thrown a lot of numbers here and I'm getting confused. What is the, what do you cap this this race at? Well, our goal is to get 20,000 runners. You'll to, get that. To, to, to come and run this year, yeah. Mm. That's our goal. It's and we need, we need people to, to support us. <laughs> of course. Come and help us do something extraordinary. Yeah. And the bigger picture is to get this those people with their clipboards mm. to get them to sign off and make this one of the world Let's major marathons. Put the mother but, city on the map. Yeah, but not only that, the, the people that are not going to run, come out, come and support, mm. come yes, and support yes. the runners because that's what you need when you're running a marathon and you're getting to the <laughs> hitting the wall stage, which, I, which mm. I did. Then the people that pick you up are the ones I was picked up by a fairy in London <laughs> and a guy and a guy running in a rhino suit. <laughs> they got me going again. Francois oh, Pino, well done thank you. with everything, sir. Thank you. But uh, the Sunlam Cape Town Marathon, you'll be hearing a lot more about that on this very radio station. Thank you for your time, sir. You're a legend of a man. I'll say it again. We'll see you on the streets. <laughs> <laughs> the most fun, laughter, <laughs> and the most music to make you feel great. Wakey, wakey, rise and shine. Monday to Friday, 6 to 9 a.m.